Hello and welcome. In this short screen movie, I'm going to show you how to connect to a MySQL database from Access using ODBC or the Open Database Connectivity API. The first thing you need to do is install the ODBC driver. You can get that from the MySQL website. Uh, you can see the address up here. Uh, that's uh, http colon slash slash dev slash mysql dot com slash downloads uh, slash connector. And the connector you're looking for for this example is the ODBC connector. As you can see, there are other different kinds of connectors for JDBC, different kinds of platforms and so on. We'll take a look at the ODBC connector. And the one that you want to download, there are two of them currently available. Uh, 3.51 is the standard production. Um, uh, version and uh, 5.0 uh, is a new um, uh, beta version. Um, you can install either one depending on your system. 5.0 is only available for Windows. As you can see, the 3.51 um, uh, download is available for other platforms. I'm not going to show you this download. I've installed it on my computer already. Uh, for Windows, it's really a simple matter of uh, picking the Windows installer, clicking the download button, and it's an automatic install, so that part of it goes very smoothly. Uh, if you have Macintosh or you're trying to install it on Linux, uh, you're going to want to check for the specifications for your system. Uh, to install those files. Once you've installed the ODBC connector, you need to set up a DSN, and I'll show you what that is. Uh, to do that, you need to go to Control Panel, and from Control Panel, select Administrative Tools, and then from Administrative Tools, select Data Sources. Uh, the DSN is the data source name. We'll open this up and take a look. Um, data source name is just a collection of information about the data source, uh, including the name of it, the uh, IP address or, or host uh, name, um, you know, how you want to log in, and some, and some other things. We'll walk through that. Uh, in Windows, you can select a user DSN that is only available to the uh, particular user on the current machine, or you can select a system DSN. Uh, this is available to anybody on the machine. Uh, my understanding is that Macintosh is you need to um, uh, install a system DSN. Um, for here, for the Windows platform, I'll install a user DSN. Uh, and that's simply a matter of clicking Add here under User DSN. Uh, and note that once I've installed the driver, um, it'll add it to this list of, of drivers that I can use uh, for this uh, new data source. I'll select the MySQL ODBC 3.51 driver and click Finish. And now, as you can see, it's asking for some information. Uh, and so we'll go through this. Uh, and you usually just need to fill in this first screen. So the data source name is some kind of name that you uh, define. So I'm going to put in sample ODBC just for a name. And this will be um, example. Uh, the server is the name of the server, could be an IP address, could be a domain name. You need to have um, a MySQL database set up here. Uh, so I'm going to use this, uh, which I've just set up as a sort of a dummy name, um, uh, where I do have a, a, a MySQL database set up. Uh, the user, um, um, you know, typically you'd log in as a user or root. And one thing I should mention here is that, and this is a, sometimes a source of error or lack of connectivity, if, if the um, MySQL database is not on the same machine that you're working on, that is if it's located in a different machine on a website somewhere, uh, you have to have access privileges for the user from uh, remote uh, systems. Um, you know, by default, um, uh, you know, MySQL, um, when you add a user, only permits you to log in locally. So uh, that can be a source of confusion. That's something you need to take care of in uh, MySQL itself. Uh, password, um, of course, and then the database. If we're lucky, it's going to uh, actually connect to the database. Uh, we see it did. I'm going to have an, um, a database here I'm going to use for an example called Images. Uh, and now we're all set to go. So we can click um, OK here. If you're having some problems, there is a diagnostic test. But uh, since it opened the database and uh, found that images um, uh, database uh, within MySQL, we're OK. So I'll click OK. Uh, and we're basically done. Now it's a matter of opening up the application you want that um, can use ODBC. So I'm first going to demonstrate this with Access. 
uh, and I'll open up Microsoft Access here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, a new database, blank database, and I'll call this um, ODBC test, and we'll create the database. Now, in order to link to the MySQL database, um, that images database that I created that DSN for, I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to go to External Data, and what I want to do is link tables. When I link tables, it'll bring up uh, um, uh, a dialog box that will allow you to um, select a data source. Uh, and I'm going to go down here under the files of type, and if you go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that you can open up ODBC databases. So I'm going to select that, uh, and then I'm going to go over to machine data sources, and you'll see that the one that I created here, the sample ODBC, uh, is available for me to select. So all I need to do is select that. Uh, I'm going to select all of the tables that are within that database and click OK. Uh, and now you can see that within Access I've added the tables from the MySQL database and we can open these up uh, and see that in fact uh, we do have access to our data. Now there's some limitations of what you can do here. You can't, um, uh, you can't do um, some uh, you know, some uh, database operations, um, you know, creating new tables, things like that, you actually need to go back to the MySQL database and do, but you can insert um, uh, new uh, values, you can update values, you can run reports, uh, and do all kinds of other things um, with linked tables. Let me close down and show you what you can do in terms of a query. Uh, so I will go to Query here, and we'll create a query and design view and I'll add each of these tables. Um, and you'll notice that um, Access takes its best guess at uh, relating, these, uh, relating these by ID code uh, with the key fields and the um, uh, primary keys and the foreign keys. Uh, you should take a look at these if perhaps uh, it's made a mistake or you need to do something different, you can. And uh, we can open these up a little bit. So let's create a simple report. Let's take the um, uh, image title and the collection title, and the photographer first name, and the photographer last name. Uh, and so we've added these um, uh, fields to our report. We can take a look and see what that looks like. This is all the information from our database now. Uh, and so I think you can see um, uh, that um, uh, we have act, uh, the, 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 the capability of, of uh, manipulating our data, reporting on our data that's in a MySQL database from Access. Uh, we can also take a look at um, the SQL view and show you the actual SQL statement that Access created uh, from our query by example database. And what, what we just did in this report is, is known as query by example. It's a very graphical, uh, GUI way to uh, uh, put together reports. Um, and it usually does a pretty good, some pretty good job. Sometimes, you know, more complex reports um, uh, will, uh, um, you know, still need some manual tinkering here in the uh, in the query window. Let's go back to Design View uh, and just to show you some of the things you can do. Um, we can do um, um, sorting. Obviously, we could put it in order of photographer last name just by dropping this down. Uh, we could also put criteria in here. Um, uh, let's see, like, um, like star, life, life star. That's going to get um, records that um, uh, where the image title uh, has the, the word life in it somewhere. Uh, note that with access, the wildcards are asterisk. With MySQL, you may recall the wildcards are um, uh, percent symbols. So there are some uh, incompatibilities in the um, in the um, SQL that's produced, but if we go ahead and take a look at that, um, now we see that we just have um, the two images that are in our table, still life with scarf. Now once again we can go take a look at the SQL that created this, uh, our SQL view, uh, and you can see that it's um, done the uh, done the inner joins on the uh, on the on the tables and the order by and um, added a where clause. So this is all pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate any more on this. If you know access, then um, uh, you can use that, and this is how you connect to it.